okay, you've seen many of these scenes. This one is 10 p.m., Tuesday night, Grand Park in Chicago. Yeah. 5 a.m., Paris, France. <laughs> 7 a.m., Togelo, Kenya. 2 p.m., Obama, Japan. 3 p.m., Sydney, Australia. But a few hours after all these global celebrations, we got a reality check from Russia. Dmitry Anatolievich Medvedev. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev delivered a scathing rebuke of U.S. policy, blaming America for the worldwide financial crisis, Kursa, harshly criticizing U.S. support for Georgia in the conflict between the two nations, and warning that Russia will soon deploy missiles to counter the U.S. missile shield in Poland. Oh, he also sent President-elect Obama a warm message of congratulations. Now, Joe Biden talked about an international crisis that will test the new president. Most have thought this would come from the Middle East or Afghanistan. But it might well turn out that handling Russia will prove the most vexing part of the new president's early foreign policy. Russia is not a two-bit nation flailing about and causing chaos. It is a major world power, flush with oil resources, angry and humiliated at its loss of empire and status. For years, we've dealt with Russia in a kind of episodic and tactical way. We really need to step back, think broadly and strategically, and work to create a new framework for relations between Russia and the West. Having a wounded and resentful Russia outside the international system is not a recipe for peace and stability. Russian officials say more than 20 people were killed after a fire extinguishing system was accidentally turned on, releasing Freon. They say the sub was not damaged and radiation levels were normal. The accident happened during a test run in the Sea of Japan yesterday.